All right, welcome back. It is time for us to start our analysis. But before you start analysis, there are a few things you need to do. First, be sure that your data are actually in the right format. We just brought in this data. Have you confirmed if they're actually in the right format that can make it easier for analysis? Number two, where are the questions? Do you have your questions available? You're not just thinking, what should I analyze? You should have taken your time to draft those questions. I won't be able to draft that here because we just want to show you the possibility of Excel to be dashboard. In subsequent versions of use cases we'll be doing, we'll definitely approach it by the business value come from a question. There are questions we want to answer. So let's create dashboards and report to answer those questions. So for one of the things I'm going to do right now is as you can see, these confirmed cases is number, but numbers should not be towards the left. They should always be towards the right. Um, meaning one way or the other, this is not a number. I have to go back to the query by going to query here and go to edit just to format and even validate. Is this a truly number? Um, I thought I actually converted it to a whole number, but I wasn't sure the last time. Oops, you see, these guys are not number. How do I know from the ABC I see here show that they are formatted as test and not number? So I'm going to click on the column and look at this button here and select all number. So it's going to run, you know, apply that effect and you'll see it's going to turn it to all number. Yep, it's done. And same thing goes to this, all number. Okay, and the last guy here, I'm going to turn this guy also to old number. If yours is old number, then that's fine. It's just because this is not. And when it's seen as test, it will not really give it, not sum up, it will not add up, it will not, uh, it will treat them as test and nothing, and you won't be able to achieve your goal. So I'm going to click on load and close. It's going to synchronize. You see, it's loading now because data, data is loading and to update all those things right here. Just watch out the alignment of this text. Uh, the numbers should actually change as well. Awesome. Can you see that? <laughs> they are here now. They are lying towards the right. Okay. I can drag this here. And a few other things we need to do is I need to extract some additional columns from date. I want to just have separately the year, the month, and the day. So year, month, and day. Okay. Uh, for year, I'm going to type year. This will allow me to extract year from this guy, you see, and I'm going to format year as text. I mean, I, I don't want to, you can't be adding years together or divide year or, you know, so it's a test. We just need it as a filter. And for month, for me to get month, I have to use the word text. So text will allow me to extract from value and I will select a format because I don't need month as number. I need month as name. So I'm going to put comma here, open the quote and type M three times. So if I type M three times, it will give me the short form of the month. January becomes J-A-N, February becomes F-E-B. But if I put 4M, it's going to just write it full. And I want to use just the abbreviation for the month so that, you know, my visualization will also be easy to work with. Um, if I press enter, you see, that's given us. And lastly, for day, I'm going to type day, you know, and it's going to give me Syria is a number, I actually need number. If I need them like Monday, Tuesday, then I can use the text format and also specify my day. I'm going to click on date now and press enter. You see, our day is seen as number, but I want to turn it to text because I'm literally not adding it together. So um, here, test. All right. So I'm doing pre preliminary, you know, formatting. Depending on data quality, you might have to do much work than that. And because I'm not connecting multiple tables together in relational format, this is why I don't have a different dimensional data like dates. Otherwise, you can even have a separate table that stores date and connect to this table and then do the filter. But I just want to use this. The next thing to do is go to design, table design, and you can see our table is consolidated table. Just click on summarize with pivot table and click OK here. It's going to have the new sheet. And that sheet, that's where we start our analysis. Okay, how do we start analysis? This pivot table is for environment where I can just start analyzing my data. I'm going to come here and drag country or region into the rows. I'm interested in that. And also confirm cases. That's the first case I'm interested in. Confirm cases, put it in value. Do you see? We have confirmed cases now. All right, we have lots. But um, instead of limiting this to Africa, let's go ahead. It's all over the world. So let's, let's do it. <laughs> all over the world. It's a sum of confirmed cases already. So how do I then specify top 10 or top 5 or those things? Uh, just come right here and you see value filter and you're going to see top 10. 
select top 10. Top 10 items, some confirm, which is fine. Top what is top 10. So click on item, yep. Click on OK. You see, these are the top 10 countries with this issue with uh, COVID prevalence. Top 10 countries. Now that we're done with top five, uh, top 10, we can also do bottom 10. So I'm going to copy this pivot table. This is the table now. I'm going to come down, create a space, then paste it here. All I have to do with this feature is to go to value feature, top 10, and change from top to bottom. Sorry, top to bottom. That sounds <laughs> really relatable for Nigerians. Okay, I'm going to click on OK. So this is top 10 and this is bottom 10 where we have privilege. And because this guy is not also sorted, I can do the uh, um, sorting later when I uh, insert my chart. But what we can do here is to name it. So click on end of this pivot table and you go to pivot table analyze, be able to name it. So it's better to name them so that I can know how to work with them. This is um, top 10 confirmed. And if I click here, you're going to see under pivot table, I'm going to call this bottom 10 confirm. Then I'm going to copy this and paste here because I, I'll keep, you know, running analysis. This sheet is analysis. This is where we're running analysis, different questions. And um, right here, I'm not interested in um, control region. I'm rather interested in confirm cases, death cases. Um, let me open this up. Okay, this guy is showing in, let me just show it in number. All right, these confirmed cases and these death cases, which also number. And um, right here, I can also add rate, <coughs> rate of death uh, to confirm. And right here is going, this is going to be confirm divided by, you know, or three, going to be Delts divided by confirm. And that will give me the rate which I come back and convert to percentage. So see, 2% here. Okay, awesome. So I have the death rates, which I might also want to expand out. Uh, actually, it's 1.7, so it's not even 2%. And let me copy this and still continue with my analysis. I'm going to paste here. This time around, um, yep, confirmed by... Um, let me go ahead and say by year. So, okay. So you can see right here, we can see confirmed by year. Of course, I don't, I need to also rename this table by coming here to pivot table and just call it um, total confirmed. B. So meaning confirmed and death, that's the table. Um, this pivot table, I'm going to name it to um confirmed by no you can't leave you can't put space in the pivot table name confirmed by year so i have this confirmed by year i'm going to copy this i'm going to have right here uh, instead of year now i'm going to drag out year and put month i think we have month yeah month okay so we have confirmed by month as well so while I'm still clicking on this pivot table, go back to pivot analyze and make sure you change it. Confirmed by month. All right. Uh, we have about six of these already. We are still analyzing our data. One, two, three, four, five. We have five already. I might be interested in this. So let's just um, start here. We are done with our analysis. The next thing to do is the chart. So you create chart. So how do you then create chart and engage the chart in our dashboard? I'm going to rename this sheet as analysis so that you know this is where we do analysis. And this sheet one, I'm going to rename it as dashboard. All right, so I can drag it and put it right there. Okay, awesome. So in the next video, we will come right here and start building our dashboard.